Hi, everybody. So today I'm going to talk to you about the burnout. I'm a little bit sad that the DroidCon is almost over. And uh, I'm going to talk about um, an, uh, a topic that is not so, uh, so cool at first sight, but I think it's a good idea to talk about it to be able to prevent it. So we are going to talk about the burnout and the burnout as an Android developer. I am Andrea. I work as a software engineer currently at Multicerta. I'm lead at the Google Developer Group of Venezia. And here you have my social links. So let's start. Why should we talk about burnout? Because the first thing, because I've been there. I've been there. I know how it can be hard to manage the burnout and to come out of the burnout. Because developers suffer from burnout, it's not me, it's not only you, it's everyone. Burnout can hit everyone, especially developers. And because the Android environment is full of pitfalls, is full of um, things that can cause us stress. And with my experience, with my um, with experience uh, that I collect uh, across uh, uh, articles and communities, I hope that I can help you to prevent the burnout. First. Uh, a disclaimer, what I'm going to tell you is the result of my experience and my researches on the topic. This is not a medical consultation. If you feel stressed and you need professional support, please contact your family doctor. So let's start by defining the burnout. The World Health Organization recognized the burnout as a syndrome and gives this formal definition. Burnout is a syndrome conceptualized as resulting from chronic workplace stress that has not been successfully managed. The key point here are chronic workplace stress and not being successfully managed. We will talk about it later. Burnout is not something new, it's not something that has become popular in uh, uh, during uh, the last, the last years, but it was first used by Freudenberg in 1974 to describe a state of emotional stress of nurses after being a long time in contact with colleagues and patients. So he continued this, this, those, studies, those studies and he extended the concept to other type of jobs to describe this prolonged state of feeling, feeling under pressure in the workplace. During a recent research survey on developers, on 500 developers, we, we can see that 82% declared to have suffered of burnout in some way especially after the changes in our lifestyle that has, that has been caused by the COVID-19. So 82%, that's not uh, just a couple of people. It's uh, something that is very, very general. And 73% uh, says that burnout had a negative impact on both work productivity and also personal life for two main causes, an increment in workload and a poor work workplace culture. Near 80% said that they talked to their managers and the managers didn't recognize the state of burnout and on, or didn't take action to prevent the burnout. And so those people said that they were ready to leave their job. That's I think that this is really, really 
uh, really, really interesting. I would need to dig deeper into it. I think that to better define the burnout, uh, uh, we need to talk about the symptoms. Uh, defining the symptoms will help us also be uh, recognized if we are encountering the burnout. Burnout symptoms of burnout can be uh, physical, so physical exhaustion, muscle pain, headache. Uh, it can also hit uh, um, represent gastrointestinal disorders. So it can hit in many ways. Uh, and if you feel one of these, maybe it's a sign that something is happening. But it, it does not only hit physically, it also hit psychologically. especially with mental fatigue, constant stress, lack of control. That means we feel that we cannot change things. We do things, we work, but it's always going bad, everything. We feeling exhausted from the beginning of the day. Before, even before we start to work, we are already exhausted. Um, it's not the classical, uh, the classic bad day. I had a bad day, I, I don't want to work anymore. It's not like that. It's more like a collection of factors that keeps repeating over time. So like uh, when you always have a bad day, when you always feel exhausted, when you always feel mental fatigue, that can be the sign of burnout coming. But what are the causes of the burnout? We previously we talked about chronic workplace stress. I think that we can split this concept in two main causes. The personality, our personality, that is how we approach our work and how we re react to stressful situations. And the workplace, the workplace that is around us, especially when it's too chaotic, to authoritative when we cannot explain ourselves when we don't feel comfortable in our workplace. Let's be honest, change the workplace is really, really hard because it's hard to change other people's mind, in particular when you try to change your boss. Have you ever tried to change your boss, to talk to your boss and try to change his mind? It's almost impossible. So. The best way to start to, is to change our personality, the way we, the way we approach to work and what we do to prevent stress. People who are more subjecting to burnout have, some, have something in common. They feel like they have to overwork, to work over time to demonstrate their dedication and this is uh, especially true during the pandemic with smart working. Many people jumped from office working to remote working, and they tend that they have to work over time to demonstrate that they are good worker, that they are they are dedicated to work. This brings also a difficulty to uh, separate work life from personal life. In fact, how can we uh, live outside of the door work stuff uh, when we do not go outside of the door? We are always in the house, in our house with a pandemic. So we still think about work and we tend to work over time because we need to demonstrate that we are good. And we need to give ourselves some rules. For example, if you work at home, Take uh, some place in your house, a uh, dedicated room to work. When you enter that room, you are working, but when you finish work, you leave the room. Keep, you need to keep your schedule to keep to take breaks and uh, keep doing uh, your social life. I want to dig uh, further on this because there is a very good talk by uh, Marco Gomiero and Gianluca Segato that is. Uh, Remote is here now what? They presented it at uh, uh, 
uh, Dev Fest 2020. It is really good on this topic, and I suggest you to watch. So let's move on. Dedicated people tend to accept every kind of responsibility. We developers tend to say yes to everything, that to every task, task that we receive. And it's, it is not so good because we tend to say yes even when no, that we don't feel right about it. We don't feel we can handle that, that, that task or that responsibility. And this is wrong. Uh, you have to do your consideration and think, um, think very well before accepting any new responsibility. Responsibility can be a new task or a new project or a new role in the company. Remember that responsibility cannot be assigned. It can only be accepted by you. So you have to talk with your manager and say if you don't feel comfortable with some task. And so we arrive to the key point, to the first key point is talk about it. If you feel stressed, if you feel burned out, you have to talk. Don't isolate, be open. If you feel overloaded, you have to talk with your boss. If you don't want to talk to your boss, talk with uh, uh, some colleagues that you trust the most and try to resolve the situation. It won't be from uh, uh, one day to another. It won't be in a couple of hours. It will take time. You have to be patient. You have to uh, talk a lot. Keep talking every day. Keep explaining your thing. It seems easy, but it's not. It's really hard. So start small and talk. Talk every day. Explain what you feel. You can also get help from meditation. But don't forget that you have to talk. Also, don't overload yourself. If you already have a, a lot to do at work, don't try to uh, overload with other tasks. For example, uh, we developers like to uh, speak at conferences. So you can say, OK, I won't do. I will do talks, but no more than once a month or we, we developers want always to learn new technologies. So you have to schedule some hours during the week that you dedicate to learning, but nothing, no more than that hours. So you don't even try to fit more tasks in your day, more than you actually can handle. And don't ever be afraid to fail. Don't ever be afraid to say something wrong. Explain yourself. Also, don't fall into common mistakes like, uh, OK, I will never have the burnout. Uh, I, I have full control of my life. Um, everything is going well. OK, that can be true for uh, some times, but uh, some, uh, things can start to go wrong and out of control. Um, so don't be too sure that you have everything under control. So next, I'm going to talk about some things that, that we need to avoid in order to control and prevent the burnout. The first thing is multitasking. So on average, people can focus for three or four hours a day. And you should concentrate complex activities during those hours of focus. Uh, like uh, if you have to design a new feature, design a new algorithm, you need to think a lot uh, or you have to analyze some bugs, um, business requirements. Uh, try to do this during those uh, three or four hours. But, but do not do it multitasking. So don't try to jump uh, from one project to another, from one task to another. Because every time that uh, we try to be multitasking uh, and we jump from one context to another, we increment our cognitive load. And this uh, slowly leads to stress. We need to avoid multitasking and context switching because it just brings stress and waste of time. 
even if we don't feel it at first. Another thing, notification. Disable every notification when you work, especially when you work in your focus hours. Um, notification from social networks must be should be off uh, during the workday, the whole workday. But don't even keep up like Slack, Gmail, Teams always open. Often I see people who works with two screens, one for the IDE and one with Gmail open or Slack open. And this is totally wrong because those apps are full of notification that will distract you and increment your cognitive load. Most of the time bringing you outside of the current context. So what can we do? We can schedule specific time intervals during the day in which we check for new messages or new emails. You can do it and you can do it. You can be uh, clear with your colleagues and say, okay, now I have to, I need to focus. I will shut down everything for one hour. If you need uh, something, please uh, call me on the phone and I will answer. If you use Slack, customize your notifications to be notified only if someone tags you. If possible, create a specific channel on Slack dedicated to urgencies that must be used only for real urgencies. I think that this, uh, this old comic from explains very well this concept of switching context uh, the of the mm, cognitive load of the stress that brings changing context every time okay what about the company the managers Do your company pays you it doesn't mean that they own the 100 percent of your time you your company doesn't know what what is best for you you know what's best for you and you should tell to your bosses, to your managers, what you need to be comfortable at work. Always be open. Don't, um, don't uh, wait for your manager to ask you, but ask to your manager what you need. Also, don't wait for your manager to always ask you, uh, well, have you done uh, when, uh, how, are you on, on time with your work? Uh, try to be proactive. So uh, you should schedule a weekly meeting with your manager to explain what you're working on. Uh, you can also prepare the uh, daily reports where you continually say what you're going to do and what you accomplish it during the day. If your manager does not uh, use some software to plan a task, suggest to use one. How can we handle urgency? Urgencies happens and we cannot avoid them. So the trick here is to schedule some time every day that you can spend on urgencies. If for that day you don't have urgencies, you can use that time for regular tasks. I think that deadlines are the worst nightmare of every developer. It's one of the greatest source of stress. And uh, uh, because we, we never know what can happen between uh, now and the deadline. Something like that. I'm sorry, I don't have the credits for this picture, but we should not be afraid of deadlines. And the trick is to think about deadlines, not as date when you, everything should be perfect, but the moment when you deliver what you have done. Uh, this, this helps to separate uh, um, uh, what manager expect and what you can accomplish. So you have to explain what you can accomplish by a deadline. Don't wait for the manager to expect something else. Be clear. And if the expectation doesn't meet what you can do, start to negotiate. Tell, be clear on what you can do and what takes for every task and what you can deliver. Okay, let's see some tools and strategies that we can use on everyday development work. First of all, make a plan. 
This is the first step to avoid multitasking in your notification and handle urgencies. You need to have a plan, to make a plan, to plan your work, uh, ideally once a week, plan the week, and uh, every day plan the task of the day. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, the tool that you use, Jira, Trilo, ClickUp, even a spreadsheet is okay. The important thing is that is that the thing, the tool that you choose, you keep use it every day. If you don't know which uh, tool you should use, start from pen and paper. It's a great tool. Paper is a great tool. It has a great advantage. It doesn't bring notification or distractions. So. Try to master your IDE. Modern IDEs are full of features that can make our work easier. If you work with IntelliJ and Android Studio, there is uh, live templates and file templates. Learn how to use them. They will make you more productive and will let you focus on what's the core of your actual implementation. For example, if you need to implement a list, so you have to create your cycle with a new adapter, maybe you will, and you don't do it since some months. Uh, maybe you will uh, don't remember exactly the syntax of adapter and you will uh, start to search on the documentation, maybe on Stack on Overflow. So you're leaving your ED, you're going to Chrome, to your browser and start to search. The search maybe brings some notifications, some pop-ups will appear and you will be caught away from your focus. So, uh, live templates and file templates not only makes you faster, but will help you stay in the flow, uh, keep your focus. Learn also shortcuts. If you don't know where to start, try uh, start with Shift Command A. That is the uh, that opens the dialog from which you can search every function of your IDE, and also use plugins uh, to automate tedious tasks. For example, one uh, uh, one great example is ADB Idea that lets you automate uh, things like uh, removing the app, reinstalling application, uh, clear application data. That is, uh, there are all tasks that we uh, do repeatedly and uh, brings uh, uh, it, that are annoying and uh, cause us to uh, go outside of the focus. But uh, mastering your IDE makes all um, uh, brings also the reality of known when not to use the IDE. What I mean by not using the IDE, I think that the, uh, there are some tasks, some little tasks uh, that don't need an IDE to be accomplished. For example, if we need just to fix a type on our strings, uh, and we we start uh, uh, our uh, Android Studio. We wait for the project to synchronize to, to have a build uh, done. Then we can fix the typo. Maybe we've we've lost two or three minutes just to fix a typo. So we don't need an IDE in this case. We need some simpler text editor that is up and running very quickly and we can focus on just doing one thing, fix that typo in the string. No build needed, no wait for file synchronization, just fix a typo. So in that case, you should use Sublime Text, Atom, also Y is a, a good choice in those cases. So everything that keeps you in the focus and lets you don't waste time. Test-driven development. Learn how to write tests and then to start and then start to write tests first. This is what test-driven test-driven development says. This move will make your developmental cycle a lot faster, minimizing the feedback time. Feedback time is the time that uh, uh, occur between the time when you make a change and when you get a feedback that your change is okay, that you didn't broke uh, something and uh, that it works. Start small from simple tests that cover small unit of code. 
Don't try to start with, uh, I want to test all my app. I want to uh, mock up services uh, and uh, stuff like that. Focus on a small unit of uh, code and start from there. An example to be clear. Let's suppose that you have to implement a sign up form and you have to validate the phone number of the user. Uh, if you go in the traditional way, you have to code your uh, interface, you have to code your phone validator class with your logic to validate the phone. Then you compile the application, you execute the application, you try, uh, you start by inserting some phone numbers, uh, or maybe first a wrong number to check that you see a uh, error message, then a correct number to check that uh, everything is going okay. And then if you, uh, find some bug, you have to go back to the IDE, correct the bug, and repeat, compile, execute, try to uh, insert numbers. You waste a lot of time. It's very annoying, and you lose the focus. So the approach with the TDD lets me create a test for to validate my phone numbers quickly the copy and paste that test, create more tests as, as I need to validate, to test my phone validator data class with different inputs. And uh, this test runs much, much more faster than a manual test. This test, this test is also repeatable. So it will, I will repeat it every time, every time I change the phone validator class until it's okay. So I can stay in the focus. I work, I focus on what matters and not on the details. Automate everything. Another th key thing you automate all you, that you can. Go with uh, uh, continuous integration. If you don't have continuous integration, continuous delivery, do it. Um, you can start, uh, if you don't know where to start, start. I suggest you to start with AppCenter. That is a good service. And this is very, very easy to, to, to start with. If you need something more po powerful, there is Bitrise, GitHub Actions, Pipelines. Do not start with Jenkins because it's very, very hard to, se to set up, especially for mobile development. Um, also, continuous development means uh, delegate to your CI the responsibility of publishing to the Play Store and App Store. Uh, publishing to the store is one of the most stressful tasks, even because uh, um, we can always do something wrong. We feel the responsibility of putting something in production, something that goes out to the user, and if we uh, maybe we can uh, um, do some errors, uh, some mistakes uh, with the uh, signatures, with uh, some commits, uh, and uh, they are all source of stress. And we tend to uh, re uh, avoid uh, the, the publishing. So I will not publish uh, today that is Friday because I'm afraid. Uh, if the publishing uh, phase is delegated to the CI, you won't have this responsibility. You won't have the, this stress. Use Git hooks. Git hooks are so powerful to automate small tasks. Uh, for example, you can use a Git hook to run a unit test every time you commit code. So it will be automated. You don't have to remember to run the test. And also, use uh, linters uh, like Android Lint or Detect. They uh, are very helpful in uh, improving your code and preventing bugs, so preventing other source of stress. How do we keep up to date? Uh, we develop developers uh, feel stressed about uh, um, we cannot keep up to date with everything. It's very impossible. It's impossible. You, you cannot know everything about every library, every update to the Android framework. 
So what can we do about it? For example, Jetpack Compose, I have this, I had this feedback from uh, some Android developers. And uh, now that we have Jetpack Compose, how do I study Jetpack Compose? Do we have to refactor all my applications? No, you don't have to refactor all of your applications. Uh, so try to separate the two concepts. One that you have to learn Jetpack Compose and when you have to implement Jetpack Compose. It's okay if your appli production application doesn't have Jetpack Compose, if you made it with a uh, constraint layout or plain old uh, relative layouts, it's okay. Your manager won't care what you're going to use as long as the application works. So you don't have to refactor if the application works. But what can you do to study Jetpack Compose? You can uh, start with a small side project, create a side project that you use just to learn and experiment with Jetpack Compose little by little every day. And the same applies to all other libraries and frameworks. So when you identify a library that works for you because it has a good documentation, you check the change logs and the issues, and you understand that this it can fit your needs, try to experiment it with a small side project. So side projects can be a playground where I experiment. Uh, I can do everything I want on a play on a playground project. Uh, I don't have the stress of being uh, um, working on production. Maybe I do something wrong. I may break something. You can break everything you want on a playground project. So it's very very good to experiment and to learn. Uh, side, project, side projects are also smaller, so it means that they take less time to compile and uh, the development becomes faster, less, uh, less frustrating than working on a full feature app. And uh, after that, the um, Playground project can become an open source project. You can share it with the community, get help from others, and help others to learn that te uh, technology. This is another uh, feedback that I got. So the same approach with uh, playground projects can be used to um, uh, find out what's wrong with the documentation. You start with a playground project, with a side project, and you start to experiment. You can uh, start from the official example and try to adjust until you get the things going OK. Um, another way is to help uh, ask for help to colleagues when you feel stuck on such things or, or the communities. Uh, for example, in uh, we have a, a couple of uh, a, a good community that is Android Developers Italia where you, post, uh, you can post your question and ask for help. You have uh, all the Google developer groups uh, in uh, every, all around the world. So join a community and talk with the community, ask help to the community. No, this is another interesting topic. Every, every time uh, I, uh, that people work on some other code, they are always, always uh, saying that they are working on bad code. And uh, this, is, this falls into what we can call working with legacy code, where legacy code is, uh, um, according to the book, working effectively with the legacy code, is every code that, is, that doesn't have test, uh, so can be it's it's the code that read, you know, written by some others or written also by ourselves some months ago, but we don't feel comfortable to change this code because uh, if we touch, we feel that we are breaking something. So the key point here is that you don't have to refactor all the code that you all the legacy code that you you um, you have in your project. You just to try, need to try to uh, fix just what needs to be fixed. 
uh, if the code is written with the uh, old MVP pattern, and uh, nowadays uh, MVVM is uh, or MVI are cooler, it's uh, it's not a problem. It's okay if the project uh, is MVP. It's not a problem. You just need to fix things, to change things slowly by writing tests and refactoring small pieces of code. So don't feel responsibility of making the code uh, good, so making all the application looks good. You just need to focus on what's important. And uh, last thing, if you don't know a clean to do a job that has to be done, do it the best way you can. That means you don't have to feel stressed about your work. You don't have to feel that you have to do everything perfect. You can. You don't have to finish everything right now in the best way possible. You have to do it in the best way that you can. If you know a clean way to do it, do it. If you do know a clean way, but it will take too long, do what you can in the time that you have. And the result to finish doing the clean way later. I think I have done.